Steve Bear. What we got going on? What we got going on over here? Oh man. If Lee Code was a trade, I'd teach you all the tricks. This is special positions in a binary matrix. Error, error. Disliking it. You dislike every problem until you can solve it, right? Because the problem is, it's not, you're not stupid. The problem's stupid. Remember that. If you can't solve it, it's not your fault. It's the world's fault. It's much easier to be an arrogant asshole if you have that kind of perspective, okay? This is not a philosophy class. So you're given an easy problem. Again, for your ego. You're given an M by N binary matrix math. What's up, Matt? Return the number of... What the hell? Return the number of special positions in Matt. Okay, so Matt is a matrix. I'm special. I'm joking. Return the number of special positions in Matt. What does that mean? Well, a position IJ is called special... If mat ij equals 1 and all other elements in the row i and the column j are 0. Okay. So when we look at this array here, right? Well, you know, this one is not special. Why? Because it shares a column with this one over here. Right? So then also, as a consequence, then this one is not special because it shares a column with this one over here, right? In order for it to be special, it's got to be all alone in its column and it's got to be all alone in its row. So this one right here is special. Why? Well, it's in this column and it's the only one in that column and it's the only one in that row. Therefore, this one is special. I rest my case, Your Honor. Okay, now when we look at this problem, well, well, look at that. We have the identity matrix. This isn't linear algebra. This one is special because it's the only one in this column and the only one in this row. And this one is special because it's the only one in this column and the only one in this row. And this one is special because it's the only one in this column and the only one in this row. Okay, this is an easy problem because the description is very short, simple, intuitive, and to the point. But the solution might not be that easy um, in terms of the optimal solution, right? And in order to find the optimal solution, what are we going to do? Well, you might think about like, well, I need to keep track. In order to solve this problem and to find out one special, I need to keep track of the number of ones in a row and the number of ones in a column and then use that information somehow to determine, right, if someone is in an optimal position, if it's special or if it's just a generic one that shares some column or some row with some other one, like a loser, right? And... Depending on how you find that information, it's going to determine the optimality, right? We're definitely going to have to look at the whole entire array, right? We have to look at the entire array. We're going to look at all the elements and we're going to say, oh, okay, this element, you know, okay, this element it shares the row with this element. So therefore it's not special or whatever, right? So we're going to have to look at the whole array, but how are we going to look at the array to ensure that, you know, we reach optimality in terms of time and space, the space time continuum. Okay, so let's stop rambling and let's go ahead and get right into it. Well, another way of stating something special. Something is special if what? It's special. An insane delay. Insanely, insanely disappointing. Something is special. I'm special. Something is special if... Only element in row, and what I mean element, I mean it's the only one in the row, right? It's the only element in the row. Okay, I'm not even gonna use my tablet anymore because it's so slow for whatever reason. And people told me to get Apple products. You see, you see what I'm dealing with? Okay, so an element is special. If it is the only one in the row and it is the only one in the column. Another way of stating this is if it's the only one in the row or you could say that it's what? It's 
the number of ones in the row is zero, right? Sometimes these problems just come down to how am I going to state this appropriately so it conveys what I'm trying to do and I can write code efficiently that solves the problem, all right? And the same thing here, the number of ones in the column is, this is one, right? The number of ones in the row is one, it's the element itself. The number of ones in the column is one, it's the element itself. So how can we look at this array and find the number of ones um, in each row with that the most efficient way? Well, what we can do is we can just look at each row, right, and count the number of ones, and then reset all the ones to that value. That way, when I look at the one again, it'll tell me how many times I've seen the one. One, 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 one. What the heck am I saying? Okay. What I'm basically saying is what we can do is get a tablet that works appropriate. No, what we can do is when we look at this system, right? This one, one, this example, one, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero. Well, we can look at each row right we look at each row of this system and what we say is well when i look at the row i'll look at the entire row and i'll say okay there's one element in this row that's a one there's one element in this row that's a one right there's one element in this row that's a one i'll look at the next one and say okay there's one element in this row that's a one then i'll look at the next element and say okay this is a zero so there's one element in this row that's a one and then i'll go all the way back and reset the ones to one and then here I'll say there's zero, zero elements in this row that, that are one. There's zero. I'm wondering if maybe if I change, what if I change the port that I use? Will that make a difference? Only time will tell. If I change, if I look at this row then, okay, there's zero ones in this row. There's zero one so, so far in this row. There's one one so far in this row. So I change all the elements to one. It's just so frustrating that my tablet's not working. So we're gonna go back to this. This is probably my worst video because of technical difficulties. Okay, so if I had zero, one, zero, 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 one, and one, zero, zero, what I'll do is I'll look at each row and figure out how many ones there are, then set all the ones to that value. So I look at this row, I said, okay, there's one, one so far, one, one so far, one, one so far, I change this to one. I look, there's zero, one so far, zero, one so far, one, one so far, so I change all the ones to one. One, one so far, one, one so far, one, one so far, so I change all the ones to one. Then I look at the column. So I say, there's one, one so far, there's two, zero, uh, there's one, one so far, there's one, one so far, there's two, one so far. So I change all these to two. There's zero, one so far, there's zero, one too far, there's zero, one, two, one so far, so I change all these, there's nothing to change. There's zero, one so far, there's zero, one, there's one, one so far, there's one, one so far, therefore I change all the ones to ones. And by the end, if this value is one, that means that it went through the row and it only found one one in the row and it went through the column and it only found one one in the column. Here it found, it must have either found, I don't know how it found it, right? After I solved the problem, I'd say, well, this is a two. Well, why is this a two? Because either there was a one, an additional one in the row or an additional one in the column, which is causing an issue. So it can't meet the criteria, right? Because this accounts for either the number of ones in the row or the number of ones in the column, right? It doesn't really matter where it came from, just the fact that it's failing, right? So the only way this stays a one is if it's the only one in the row, because if there was another one in the row, this would have got incremented to two. The only way this stays uh, a one in the column is if it's the only one in the column because if there was another one in the column, it would have changed to a two or something greater if there are more ones in the column. So all we really need to do is look at each row. So we'll say for each row in range length of mat, and we'll say number of ones we've seen. We'll call it ones equals zero, complicated. And then we'll look at each column and we'll say if mat of zero of zero, if mat of row C, so if it's not equal zero, then this will be true. We say ones plus equal one.
and then we say, well, if one, so if there was a one to, to, if there was actually a one populated, then we need to convert all the ones to one, right? So then we'll say for row, for column and range. So now we update all the values in this column. So we say mat of RC. Or no, we can just do it like this. So we'll go through again after we check the whole system. This will make sense in a second. I'll explain it a little bit better than the hand wavy thing I just did. So what I'm doing here basically is I'm saying we'll go through, we'll look at each row, then we'll go through the entire column to figure out the total number of ones in the whole column. And then after we do that, we'll update all the ones we'll, we'll only do this if uh, we'll only do this if mat of rc right but what if one's a zero okay that's good sorry there's like a lot of edge cases that i'm trying to condense into short code which is making it kind of unreadable but making it very concise so you know that's always a uh something you're gonna have to be flexible about and struggle with and find the the happy medium right or you have to compromise because you know if i make my code more clear it's gonna be more spaghetti and like verbose but if i make it more concise then it's less clear so but basically what i'm saying is okay after i update all the after i figure out the total number of ones I'm gonna update these values accordingly, right? So what next, when I look at all the columns, right? I'll look at this column, realize there's two ones, and then I'll update these ones to twos. And then when the problem's over, like the example, whatever is a one will tell me how many unique elements are in the system, okay? Ugh. Okay, so that's that. So now we do the same thing, but we wanna do it for the columns. So we're gonna write some ugly code after I just gave you a whole lecture about how you shouldn't, write code like that uh sometimes i shock myself now this is a very easy way to not think about what you're doing when you're doing rows and you're looking at each row now to look at each column right see how i quickly did that all right looks good because it's the same thing we're just looking at columns now instead of rows and then when we're done we're just going to return the sum of element so we'll look at each row value equaling one for row in row for so i guess that'd be column for column in row for row in mat let's fly what was that? That's why you stick to coding. Okay, so terrible video. All right, so what is the run space time complexity? So let's say n equals the length of mat and m is the length of mat zero. So number of rows, number of columns, right? For time, well, we look we have to look at all rows and all columns so that's going to take mn time and then we do it again another mn time and then we have to sum all of them that equal one that's another mn time so that's three mn time which is big o of mn all right for space complexity well we're using math right i'm using math So since I'm using mat, I'm not adding any additional variables. Where am I adding additional variables here? I'm not. You know what I mean? I create constant variables to look at each RC pair, another pair of constant variables, and then I just sum the answer. So I'm not creating any variables. See, that's what's beautiful about the solution. All right, is I don't need to like create some sets or something to try to figure out like, oh, well, you know, what happens if there, how many rows it comes, whatever. No. So I'm just using the, the matrix that's given, right? So this is an example where, well, it's constant space, right? But the problem is with these kind of problems with leak code, right? Which is a, a, a much larger systemic issue with data structures and algorithms is like, in reality, if I'm 
giving a matrix to a function, right? If I'm providing it with a matrix by reference so I can modify the matrix, I might not want them to modify the matrix, right? I want them to tell me something about the matrix, but not modify it. But in order to get constant space here, we end up modifying the matrix that's given. So, you know, in reality, this might not be good code practice, right? You might not want to concern yourself so much with saving space because, oh, I'm saving space. Isn't it so great I'm saving space? Yeah, no, jackass, you just took my matrix and then you modified it. I don't want you to do that, right? So this is constant space, but at a cost. The cost is weird to have a matrix that starts modifying the internals of the matrix. I don't. I might not want you to do that. I just want you to tell me something about it, all right? Peace out.